first things first to get out of the way and something I kind of wanted to highlight beforehand. I didn't really want to highlight on the show because I kind of wanted to stay away from talking about football stuff because it drives me mental having to support United going through whatever we're going through now at the moment and seeing what our rivals are doing in the league and then seeing what the clubs are doing outside the top six. It's quite scary to see how we might where we might be in a few years if we don't get our act right, especially considering the amount of player power we seem to have at this club now. It's just getting ridiculous, right? So um, as most of you guys know, we lost 1-0 to Wolves at home the other day um a fairly standard performance from united this season despite our change in manager things don't really seem to change um the players st- still stink up the place the fans still have delusions of grandeur about certain players um our c- people at the club can't seem to see what the issue is and we just keep going around and around in circles until i don't know when it's going to end maybe we're going to have to drop out of the top four for consecutive seasons maybe that might be a lesson we might learn maybe it might be more humiliating results i don't know what lesson needs to be had in order for us to collectively wake up but i still think there are sections of the fan base that really do think if we sign declan rice and you know harlan that suddenly we're going to be challenging for the title and i still think there are people at the club who generally think the players there are good enough to challenge for the title so there's too much but there's too um the variance in terms of opinion of where we should go and how we're heading as a club is just too there's too many differences for us to have any kind of collective opinion to kind of pull us forward so that kind of obviously doesn't help um but performances wise that's been the most worrying thing i think about united's play um i think wolves even at even away even at home especially when you're playing them away is always going to be a difficult game they're notoriously hard to break down they don't concede a lot of goals um they tend to have really decent players in the attack and in midfield who can punish and hurt you even though they don't score a lot of goals they can always hurt you in different sort of ways from set pieces um you know passing the pass quick passing football um counter attacking they have different kind of weapons at their arsenal even though again they have quite a small group of players to kind of pull from in terms of seniority but they're fairly fairly dangerous so it's never an easy game but in terms of performance, again, like I said, performances, because I don't think this is a game that United fans would have expected to win, hands down, because, again, Wolves are a tricky side to face. But the performance of the team was just so bad that it kind of makes you wonder what goes on in training, whether or not the coach that we have in at the moment, Raf Ragnick, is actually being listened to, um, whether he's having to play players because of their media branding sponsorship in you know um, commitments um or whether the players that we have in general are just severely overrated and this is their level like he can only do so much i don't know what it is maybe it's a combination of all those things above but this performance was so bafflingly bad that it kind of beckers belief like i get like you know i don't know how many chances we created we must have created maybe maybe less than five i think let's look at the stats actually on this on this google thing it's got the line. Let me see what the stats say. The stats say they had, <laughs> oh my God. The stats say they had 19 shots, Wolves, and we had nine. And they had six on target and we had two, which kind of speaks to the overall shocking nature of the game. And I think only in the second half, we kind of maybe got a foot on the ball more, which is why the possession stats were a bit better in our favour overall in the game. But if I remember correctly, the first half possession stats were mostly in Wolves' favour. So they came to United, dominate possession, which is, you know, I think sometimes when you're facing teams like that at home, you could be forgiven for like allowing them to have a couple of chances because you're always attacking and you're leaving open space at the back and a hit on the counter. But when they proper have possession of the ball, I think again in the first half they're sixty percent to our forty. It makes you it leads to it kind of leads you to understand that they are dominating every aspect of the game and maybe the way we set up to kind of played into their hands. We had the classic Ralph Ragnick four two 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 formation, and obviously um, Wolves played with a with a three four three formation, which kind of essentially overloaded the midfield and also allowed them to have the space on the width to kind of um, overlap with their fullbacks and the likes of um, sorry Semedo and Marcao were just having running riot down the right and the left. Even even Says had a bit of joy down there too, so they were really getting a lot of joy for down our whips. And again, maybe we played. In into their hands because of our formation but i still think with the amount of training these guys have done so far it's not been a lot again i think you know covid has definitely hurt things and postponements but i don't think that's a good excuse because every team has had to deal with something no one's had a perfect couple of weeks to be drilling down things and put things into place everyone's kind of struggled but i still think we should see more of ralph's football now than we actually seeing we're not seeing enough of it and we're not seeing what i think The more concerning thing, it looks like we're not seeing, to use a DSP analogy or a DSP phrase, 
it doesn't look like we're seeing much buying from the players. It doesn't seem that the players really believe in what he's trying to do. Um, they tend to just try to do what he wants and then it feels like they just revert back to type when it doesn't go right because they just don't know any if anything else. So I don't know whether or not that's just a personality thing that we just unluckily have a group of players who are s severely overplayed, which kind of inflated their ego and made them believe they're better than what they are. Or whether it's just we're just unlucky and the players are just limited in their IQ in, it, in their footballing intelligence and this is just what they can do they can't do anything more than this and you have to wonder when it comes to these sort of systems whether or not they are more suited to players who are maybe younger more of a point to prove um, maybe players who have played under the system for many many years because I don't know how much you can really teach a player like a Bruno Fernandes to play in this role if all his life he's played as a conventional number 10 the way he's played a number 10 it's not really I don't really see, you know what I mean like like Bruno Fernandes does that thing where he spams crosses right or where he does that quick release kind of pass around the corner because he's not really good at kind of retaining the ball under pressure or dribbling yeah that's just his thing what he has to do again I'm so I'm not a fan of his he's not my perfect number 10 but that's what he does as a player it's very difficult to expect a player like that to then to go to like a team like a Man City or whatever where you need to be on the ball you need to be comfortable on the ball receiving in tight spaces and play that kind of short passing game it's really difficult for, it to, for him to expect to play like a Gundogan when he plays like Bruno Fernandes, especially at his age. So maybe that's that says, maybe that's why most of these kind of coaches like Ragnik, um, like the clubs and stuff, when they come into these clubs, it's really important. It's less important about who they sign and more important about who they let go. Because once they get let go of the players who are unwilling to learn or incapable of learning, it then opens up space for the kids to come in or for players who have a point to prove to learn those things in order to play. That's what basically happens, isn't it? And I think because we have just too many players in some positions and not enough in others, and just too many in general just hanging around, right, who who are clearly either disillusioned or want to leave. I think of the Pogbas, the Martials, the Lingards, the Van der Beeks, the Matters, the Hendersons, the Bailly's, right? There's a few players there who clearly don't know what they want to do at the club and clearly aren't necessarily infused by what's going on. It doesn't necessarily, I don't think, brief for a good working environment in training, right? When those players already want to leave, they're already disillusioned. They don't get the way of new playing that's kind of, that's kind of being enforced or being spoken about by the new coaching staff. Um, they don't see a way forward, personally. They maybe have different views on how the club should go forward. I don't know, whatever it may be. I just think it doesn't lead to a good thing. And I think that's basically what we're seeing on the pitch. We're seeing all that confusion. And when we come against the Wolves, who are well-drilled, well-organized, who have played together for many years under different managers, of course, but the core of that team has been together for a while. Um, they're very experienced. I think, what is it? Someone said, I think um, I heard Housen say, Neves, I think he's at 25, 26. He's already got like 200 games under his belt at that age, right? Playing top flight football. So these players are all very experienced. Um, have a lot of skill um, for them for for you to kind of compete against that especially with the formation we play with the formation that they play it just kind of played into their hands and they completely dominated us for the majority of the game had the better chances and deservedly went a go ahead and obviously won the game in the end the only kind of silver lining that can come from this is obviously Phil Jones performance um, I've been a big critic of Phil Jones I'll still maintain that he is a representation of everything that's wrong with United a player of his standing quote unquote um, still being at the club after two and a half years of not playing um, hasn't really given any indication that he wanted to leave the club to seek partial new to play elsewhere there was this other story that allegedly happened I'm not sure if it's true or not that when Rafa Varane was signed he actually wanted a number four which is kind of what he's known for in terms of wearing um, as a centre-back for United and Phil Jones was unreal I'm willing to give him the number four because he believed that he could play his way back into the club or play his way back into starting lineup, which obviously he did. Obviously, mostly due to injuries and whatnot in COVID. But I just think somebody with that kind, a player that's so ordinary, I think, of that level, having that ego, again, speaks for the general um, unprofessional nature of the club and just the unserious nature of the club, right? We're not really trying to become the best club in the world. We just are a media company or a media corporation that happens to play football. That's essentially what we're doing. We're just living off the success of our glory years from beforehand with Alex Ferguson in charge. And we're just kind of riding that until we can ride it no more. But there's no real intention, I feel like, or desire from the people above, from the players, from the whatever, to get us back to where we need to be on that perch, right? Back up to the top. It doesn't exist because we don't move like that kind of club because I feel Jones wouldn't still be at the club if that was the case. He'd play a youngster there. But he did. He played. And considering that he's been out for two and a half years, he showed the kind of heart and courage and you know 
game readiness that you'd need for a player playing at Man United. I think he played with a point to prove and he clearly did do that. Maybe you could t- say he had one mishap which kind of led to the goal but again I wouldn't be too fair to blame him on that. Again even though I'm not a fan of his I think he did really well. He was head and shoulders above everybody. I think there's a picture going around on social media of him kind of jumping up and down before the game getting psyched up and everyone else is looking glum and it kind of speaks you know it speaks volumes to the overall nature of the club but there needs to also be had asked some questions about what Ralph Ragnick is doing um, with this midfield, with this formation, with the players available. Um, it doesn't seem like certain players are judged the same way as others. Certain players get away with absolute murder. It took a while for Rashford to get dropped. It took a while for Bruno to get dropped, even though they were playing poorly. We still haven't seen Van der Beek start a game. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Phil Jones started a game in the league before Van der Beek has, despite Ralph Ragnick coming in saying he'd get a chance to play, despite him saying he doesn't want him to leave. I just don't get the, Va- the, the Van der Beek thing. The Van der Beek thing, I rate him. I don't think there's any midfielder in that team who could definitely say they're better than him overall. I don't think they exist, personally. If you don't rate Van der Beek, it's fine, as I mean, fan but I don't think you can honestly say that McTominay, Matic or Fred are that much better than him so if that's the case and they keep playing why can't he play also because it's not as if those guys are shit and then he doesn't play them no he still plays them because there's only ones available but for some whatever reason he doesn't trust Van der Beek to play in that position or to even replace um, Bruno Fernandes because if I'm not mistaken when Bruno Fernandes was off or was out injured or suspended, he replaced him with Greenwood or Sancho or somebody, right? It wasn't even Van der Beek that got to play, which is bizarre. You'd imagine that Van der Beek would accompany or would complement a Sancho more in that midfield more than a Greenwood because Greenwood essentially is a striker. He's not a midfielder. I think this idea that Greenwood is Foden is the main adverse of Foden has been kind of put to bed now because we clearly see he can't play that position. He's better up front as a centre forward. But again, because of seniority and because of the brand and because of the money spent and because of the names... In terms of Cavani and Ronaldo, Greenwood is probably never going to play up front for United again unless those two, one or two of those guys gets injured. And that's what happened when Cavani was out. When Cavani was out, Greenwood played alongside Ronaldo. As soon as Cavani comes back in again, he's not going to play up front again. So that's obviously a big problem. But next question needs to be asked about Raf Ragnick in terms of his ability to identify who the actual good football players are in the club. I still don't get the whole Martial thing. I think even if he wants to leave, I think you still play him because he's clearly... In this system or in the players we have available, how you want to play football, he's clearly going to be a better complement to either Ronaldo or Cavani playing up front than either of them are going to be to each other because he's mobile, because he can play quick interchanging passes, he can come in off the left, he's not going to occupy the same space that Ronaldo or Cavani would occupy if they're through the middle. It just would work better. And I think if he does want to play for, play for a move, especially just considering the amount of services given to the club and the amount of big goals you scored, let him play for his move. I don't necessarily see what's wrong with that. I really don't get it. Like other clubs have done it with other players that want to leave. Why are we suddenly the club now that ice is out players because they want to go so elsewhere? I don't really understand it. It doesn't make any sense. Especially if we're not getting a sign of a player. If we're not going to sign somebody, then anti Martial should play. That's basically what I'm saying. Same with the Van der Beek thing. If you don't rate Van der Beek, sell the guy and get someone else in that you can actually play because we need another option in midfield. Because at the moment, Matic, McTominay and Fred are not the answer. Especially when they're in there together. We need someone to kind of mix it up and offer some sort of respite. Because at the moment, those two or those three can't pass consistently for an entire game to save their life. They can't command the midfield. They're not at the level of the top teams. Like, neither of those guys are better than Cover or on the same level as Kovacic. So, like, what are we talking about even? So, those are major, major concerns. And I don't know, man. Again, worrying game overall. I think United have a lot of problems. We have a lot of issues. I don't necessarily see them getting better before they get any worse. I'm of the thinking, maybe I'm in the minority here, that we probably need to go down a level in terms of um, not qualifying for the top four in order for us to wake up because I don't think we're a club that really learns our lesson based on successes. We mostly learn lessons based on failures. And even then, we still take a long time to actually make a move or to make a decision. Um, but I think if we, if we fail to finish top four this season, which is very likely, considering the four, of Arsenal, considering the form of West Ham, considering the form of Tottenham, um, those clubs are all, I think, playing way better than us with kind of less resources. Um, you would maybe say with better managers, maybe it's in the modern says I don't know, but still, those clubs I feel like are in a you know are in a good position to solidify that spot. If that's the case, it's going to be a good thing. If we drop down to Europa League or the Europa Conference League, that's going to be a good thing for the club. We need to have some level of wake up call because I don't think. 
because I think most people will agree elite positions are a great indicator of where you actually are they actually display where you are as a club there's no lying there's no fobbing the numbers when it comes to the league table you are where you you you, you, you finish where you, you deserve to finish in a the league there's no kind of mucking about on that one um, but again man just a concerning place to be for a United fan I don't see it getting better anytime soon um, there's loads of conflicting kind of information coming out at the club i think i saw recently a tweet going out allegedly some players feel disillusioned with ralph ragnick's flipping um way that he's managing the club and stuff i think i've actually got it up here actually let me get it up on there all of this stuff is like really concerning and really kind of um doesn't make any sense but if it was me I, i'd be willing to let go of every player that wants to leave and just start again with the kids and whatever's left Whoever veteran or whoever senior players left, whoever's left after the fact, just play them and the kids until the end of the season. Because we're going to get a new manager in anyway at the end of the, at the, end of the year, supposedly, right? Um, another manager is going to come in because Ralph is an interim because he's going to be consulting about it. If that's the case, just start from scratch. Let all those players leave so you can actually have the ability to actually coach these players into some semblance of a coachable side so that the new manager comes in has something to build from because at this point i don't see what they have to build from seeing them they just got names they don't have players that can actually play anywhere in football so obviously that's not good um what is it da, 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 da. let's see here oh my god look at this absolutely terrible our club in it so supposedly this is the news coming out from um united right so the first bit of news of course is there's a good chance that one matter will stay united until the summer which is obvious because you know united don't let go of players for some reason um even if there's surplus to requirements whenever a player wants to go it's like we remember they're alive oh no no we want to keep it actually we want to keep it because of our numbers they don't actually want to keep them because of they want to play them or because they see that they're going to make any sort of difference to the overall side and i don't get it if i'm at a surplus to requirements and you don't want him at the club let the guy leave and seek partials new but they don't we keep him at the club he's going to get you know he's probably going to get another contract renewal going to keep paying the money and then by the time it comes from to leave we're not going to be able to get the transfer fee we want and then we're going to be disappointed it's like you you make a rough for your own back in that one it says here um a source uh close to the squad claiming as many of 11 players now want to leave after becoming disillusioned with life at united which is understandable considering circumstances they want to go let them leave again like i said i think the players are clearly the virus at the club i think what um what Mourinho said about Paul Pogba a few years ago that he was a virus, I think, was kind of right. But I don't think it's just only him. I think it's the players overall. Um, I think at that time as well, that was when he kind of lost the battle with Anthony Martial. He wanted to sell him. And I think Anthony Martial was basically, what was it, Richard Arnold or somebody in the club higher up's favourite player. So obviously they kind of kabushed that move. But that kind of goes to show you the, the kind of influence and the power these players have at the club, considering they've done not much. They've not really won big honours and stuff, right? And they're not really consistent performers at the club. For them to have the ability to dictate what managers can sell, what they can buy, if, if they get sacked or not, it's just disgusting, really. Um it says here many of the players are overwhelmed sorry underwhelmed by Ragnick's coaching and not impressed by the tactics and disappointed by the lack of quality of his assistant so they were disappointed or no they didn't make a they didn't kick up a stink when Solskjaer was thinking no they didn't kick up a stink in the first couple of years of Solskjaer but then when it started to go wrong for him the same guy that is allegedly all supported and respected they all started leaking news about him to the press they were all bewildered at his level of coaching but then now another guy comes in who's meant to be the grandfather and the mentor for people like you know Tuchel um you know um Klopp and Nagelsmann and stuff now suddenly this guy isn't good enough for these same players who have won nothing in the game or who are basically playing really shift forget one nothing maybe you can argue against that because some of them have trophies but for the most part these players have been mediocre for this club for many many years more more years probably the managers that we've hired have been unsuccessful right those managers have probably won more trophies as managers themselves than the club have vis-a-vis -vis. do you know what I mean that sort of thing it doesn't really make any sense um, unless the players here Jesse Lingard Donny van der Beek Eric Bailly Don Henderson are among those players who have become frustrated at their failure to give the chance on the ragging which is true the chance thing is a big deal Jesse Lingard for sure he can kind of blame himself kind of partially because he was obviously he had a very successful loan at West Ham last season um, he clearly wanted to stay there I think he probably would have preferred to stay there United then goes to Ronaldo, who's his idol. He then gets told by Oli that he wants to be part of the team again. He thinks he's going to make a contribution. And of course, I think Lingard never really went to leave United anyway because he loves the club. Um, he then stays because he wants to play with his idol and because he's given assurances by Oli that he has to play. He's going to play. He doesn't play at all. 
And I think most of it has to do with the spanking that we got from flipping, you know, um, Man City probably played into it. Also, Liverpool and stuff, maybe that played into it. I don't know, in terms of all the decision making. But he doesn't play it and now he's basically on the bench, rotting away during his peak years. Donny van der Beek, the same sort of thing. He probably should have seen the the writing was on the wall a long time ago and left under Oli's tenure. But again, he was sold a dream by the club that he'd get a chance to impress, he'd get a chance to regain his spot in the team. It didn't happen under Oli, but then he was given assurances under Ralph it would happen, and it still hasn't happened. Phil Jones started ahead of him. And Eric Bailly is the same thing. He can't really have any complaints because he signed the contract knowing full well that Mike, Harry Maguire is one of our centre-backs, and maybe there was rumours that we are going to sign another one. So if that was the case, we were never going to sign an understudy. We were going to sign a starter. So the fact that he would re-sign a new contract at the club knowing that he's not going to play week week out because Harry Maguire is always going to play because he's an England captain. So because he's a club captain, was dumb. Dean Henderson, the same thing, was sold a dream. Like all these players have kind of valid criticism as to why they would want to leave now and why maybe they were didn't leave beforehand because you know the criticism, sorry, the the guarantees they got from the club were a bit um, manipulative in their nature, right? Um, it says here another one clicks are understood to have formed within the United squad with interim boss Ralph Ragnick facing many of the same problems that forced the second of uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. An increased number of players margin marginalized on the Solskjaer are suffering the same treatment under Ragnick, which also led divisions within the United Dressing Room, of course. And that's what I've always said. Like, Oli, this whole thing about his rebuild, cultural reset is bullshit because he's left a pretty toxic dressing room for the next manager to come and pick up. And the same dressing room that he was kind of lording over and saying he's got great players were the same ones that essentially got him the sack anyway because they're down tools. And they're now the same people who are suddenly turning around and trying to tell us that Ralph Ragnick's a problem. He might be the issue. He might be a bit of a dinosaur. He might have been past his best. He might be more of a better person to run the club upstairs than to be running the club from the dugout. Cool. Let's say that's true. But so far, no manager has been able to get the best out of these players over the years. And we're starting to think now, most of these fans should accept the fact that this is definitely an issue with the players. These players are definitely the virus. They're definitely the players who have kind of held the club back all these years. And we need to get them out sooner rather than later. Um... Continued here said the source says it's not good. The atmosphere is really bad, and it looks like there are going to be a big problems ahead of for United. Of course, Ronaldo, um, there's frustration in some players about the influence of Christian Ronaldo holds over international teammates and other Portuguese speaking players. Harry Maguire, Sun Kavani, and Mason Greer, I believe, to have found unsub undroppable presence of Christian Ronaldo have challenged to their expected roles. What? Harry Maguire doesn't. Harry Maguire clearly has an issue. The fact that Ronaldo is more of a senior player, and obviously should have the armband then more so than him. And Harry Maguire should never have the armband at United because I think it's definitely been a um, a burden for him. I don't think he's performed well overall as a captain. I don't think his status and his stature as a player deserves that armband in the first place, especially considering the amount of relegations he had to suffer the clubs he's been at, and considering the fact that he's grossly over over overvalued in terms of his transfer fee, which has definitely affected his perception as a player, because I think if we were to sign him for 50 million, 30 million, it would have been a different story. But the fact that he was signed as 80 million off the back of a Virgil van Dijk signing that went to Liverpool, you can't help but compare the both of them and clearly one player is better than the other, right? Even though Virgil van Dijk isn't fucking, you know, Cannavaro or anything, there's a real big difference in class and skill and ability and, you know, uh, presence and leadership. It's just miles and miles apart. Um, I just don't get any of it. I really don't. And some people expected the Ronaldo thing to be to be this situation where essentially you're bringing back a legend of his ilk. He's going to ruffle some feathers. And I just don't, I just don't get it. From Ronaldo's side, I don't get it. I think for Ronaldo, you're coming to back to his club you're coming back to a mess. He probably would have been better off going to Man City. You would have been a plug and play. He would have been sitting in the box or standing in the box and just tapping goals in for fun, right? It would have been an easy job for him to kind of just tap the goals in and continue going. It would have, been, it would have hurt as a United fan to see him in the Manchester City blue. But as a player, he wouldn't have had to work as hard as he's doing now at the moment. Running, chasing, you know, keeping balls in the in the, in play and then having Aaron, Aaron Romasaka just kick them out because he mistakenly kicked the ball with his left foot first before hitting with his right. Like, it just wouldn't, it's just so much trouble for somebody of his kind of standing. It doesn't really make any sense. But again, maybe the money was just too good to turn down. And I think basically that's most the update. But yeah, United's in shambles. We're not going to get any better anytime soon. It's going to get worse before it gets better. It's probably going to get 
brutally bad before it gets better and you just got to strap yourselves in. Me personally, I've decided I'm not watching any more games. I'm done. I think this club has kind of used up any more of my free time that I don't need to use, committing myself to like, what, two hours for the match, another three hours for the post-match analysis on Twitter spaces, YouTube channels, you know, Twitch and shit. I'm just watching so much content regarding my team after the back of a loss, so I'm not going to do it. I'm really not. I'm done until the end of the season um, or done until we get a new manager or whatever. I'm just done. I'm just done for the season. I'm over it. Um, I'm waiting until a new, new season. Hopefully we get rid of all these players that don't want to leave in January, some around this time, so we can kind of clean shop and maybe brighten up the atmosphere somewhat in the dressing room because we need some level of change because this is getting too much now, man. This is honestly getting too much. But, you know, maybe I'm in the wrong there. I don't really know. What can we do? 